Hi and welcome to my channel 3D Printing Geek. My name is Tom and today we are going to talk about bed leveling myths and uh, I think most of them are... Ah, but see, see yourself. Let's get into it. Before we start going into the myths, I will show you some sorts of auto bed leveling sensors which you could use uh, to do auto bed leveling and uh, explain their working principles. And then we continue with myth one. Stay tuned. This is one of the first uh, auto bed leveling sensors I was working with. It came with my TV Terran tool a few years ago. And the working principle, it is an inductive sensor, which means it uh, induces a magnetic field in the hotbed below. That means uh, there will be a current in the heatbed uh, producing another magnetic field which will be sensed by the sensor. Um, the problem with these sensors is they work only very close to a metal hotbed. Um, as soon as you are using a glass sheet between the metal heatbed and your print surface, then they uh, are not very reliable. This is uh, the second sensor I will show you. It's a capacitive sensor which uh, reacts as its name implies, changes in capacitance when it moves down to a surface. And uh, the good thing is that it will also work with glass sheets between the heat bed uh, and the print surface and the nozzle. Um, one thing which is problematic, it's uh, very large and um, yeah, needs a different uh, voltage to work and it's uh, a little bit uh, clumsy to get uh, it adjusted right. Finally, we have uh, the BL Touch. Um, here's a genuine one. There are also clones available, but I won't uh, recommend buying clones. You can have luck and get a good one, but you can also be unlucky and get one uh, which makes more work than uh, it's worth, um, ending up in buying you a genuine one. So, if you buy cheap, you buy twice. The working principle here is um, we have a spool in the top and uh, we have a pin. Um, the pin has a small magnet and the spool will um, create a magnetic field which can pull the pin in or push the pin out. And uh, there's also a small hole sensor inside so that when the uh, probe goes down and touches the heat bed, it will snap upwards and trigger. And I found these sensors to be the most reliable and repeatable um, I could find by now. And some words about um, bed leveling. Um, here you see a bed which is leveled nice. When the nozzle moves, it stays at the same distance all the way. On the upper image, you can see what's uh, a misaligned heat bed. Here the nozzle has the right distance to the bed, but as soon as it moves, the distance gets greater and this will cause failed prints. And uh, later I will show you how to do a manual bed leveling on an Illegal Neptune 2, but uh, the procedure is the same for any FFM printer. The first myth we come around with is uh, bed leveling is hard, but bed leveling is not hard. You need just to take some time to practice and getting used to it. In fact, after having some practice, you can do it with your eyes closed, almost. Uh, so, let's see how to do it. I will show it on my Illegal Neptune 2 and uh, support it with its uh, leveling support. So, watch and stay tuned for the second myth. So, let's see how the leveling for an Illegal Neptune 2 is to be done. 
here in the leveling menu are all the points we can get the printer to move the nozzle to, which is the front left point, front right point, the back right and left right, uh, back, back left point, and also the center point. When we choose the front left point, the printer homes and afterwards moves to the first position, which we will check. The only tool we need is a normal sheet of paper and uh, the goal is to put the nozzle in a distance so that we can slide the piece of paper between it uh, with some resistance. If we have the nozzle too close, we are not able to push the paper in between. And if it's too far off, then uh, you will feel that you can slide the paper without any resistance. So make sure you feel a slight resistance between the nozzle and the heat bed. One very important thing is uh, that you preheat your bed and your nozzle to the temperatures you normally use in printing which in my case is about 60 degrees for the bed and I let state at that temperature I let state at that temperature for some while um, to make sure that I get an even heat distribution and I also heat up the nozzle to printing temperature um, according to the material I want to print next, which is mostly between 200 and 220 degrees Celsius. After leveling the first point, we continue with the second point uh, and do the same. Just adjust the knobs so that we can slide the paper in between and feel a slight resistance. We continue with the third point, also adjust until we can slide the paper, feeling a slight resistance between the bed and the nozzle. And the last edge in the back left. And here you can see the nozzle is a little bit too close, so I have to lower the bed until I can slide it in between. The last point to check is the center. And that seems already okay. After doing a first leveling, uh, I repeat this at most one time to make sure the bed is level. The second myth is that auto bed leveling makes manual leveling obsolete. Absolutely not. Though auto bed leveling will accommodate a misaligned heat bed, having the bed far off being level will prevent having nice right angles in that direction and with that auto bed leveling can't help you. Before you get into the enjoyment of using auto bed leveling, the heat bed has to be leveled well manually at least once. So it's worth to learn manual leveling and then you are free to go with auto bed leveling Though I know that a lot of uh, professionals prefer manual leveling over auto bed leveling. And to the third myth, auto bed leveling is superior to manual bed leveling. It's true that auto bed leveling can make life easier, but it can also be tedious to get it right. 
depending on the type of bed leveling sensor, an adjustment of the Z offset is required to accommodate the offset between the probe and the nozzle tip. And the fourth myth is that manual leveling has to be done before every print job. That's not true. Once the heat bed is leveled well, and uh, if the bed is kind of sturdy, enough tension of the springs pushing the bed up, a manual leveling might only be necessary every tenth print or so. You'll notice when. The fifth myth is that manual leveling doesn't help with a warped heat bed. This is not also true, at least not when using uh, some sort of um, approximation from the firmware. What you can do is uh, doing a manual leveling first to get uh, the heat bed um, level as good as you can, and then you can do what is called a mesh bed leveling which is that you um, go to some points on your heat bed and dial in the Z uh, position so that the nozzle tip is close to the heat bed. And these points will be saved in your printer's firmware and the firmware will then approximate uh, the height distance between these points when it moves, making sure the nozzle stays at the same distance all over the bed. It will do so until the specified fade height is reached and uh, then the approximation will be turned off. Last but not least, the sixth myth. Leveling can be done without preheating. I wouldn't recommend doing a cold leveling unless you really know what you do, which is having enough experience. Both the heat bed and the printing nozzle will expand when heated up and cause the distance you dialed in to become off. This can be as much as ruining your first layer because in the heated state the nozzle and the heat bed are much closer to each other than being cold. The aluminum bed will expand and the nozzle expands in its length as well in hot condition. It's most preferable to heat up both the heat bed and the nozzle up to uh, mostly printing temperatures to take these changes into account. When I do my leveling I preheat my bed to 60 degrees Celsius and I let it stay at this for a while to make sure the heat is distributed equally and I also heat up my nozzle to something between 200 and 220 degrees Celsius depending on the material I want to print next. That way you can be sure to have the right distance for printing. That's it and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I could give some insights and help you get better prints. If you have questions or comments write me in the comment section down and uh, also put your suggestions for topics you would like to see in upcoming videos. I'm currently working on some interesting things which I hopefully can share with you soon. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and uh, to get notified about upcoming videos. Like it and share it. See you next on 3D Printing Geek.